What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a little bit of a fun video to share with you guys. We're going to be ranking uh, deployment features or deployment mechanisms. Now I've got as many different ones as I can find. I don't want you guys to uh, put too much stock into the knife that is representing the element of deployment because it is just that. It's just one knife that's representing it. Obviously, depending on the locking system and the detent style and how well the knife was tuned, um, any deployment system can be considered good. So uh, it's going to be kind of in a general sense here. I probably don't have all, in fact, I definitely don't have all of the different deployment systems, um, but I put as many in here as I could. And I'll actually link knives um, categorized by deployment systems down in the description if you're looking for something specific so that you can check them out if you want to. I thought this would be really, really fun. I haven't done a, a ranking system in a bit or a, a tier video in a bit. Um, you're probably wondering, how am I going to do this? So each knife or each um, you know deployment system is going to be ranked uh, with three different factors in mind. Number one, satisfaction. Obviously, you know, uh, us as knife people, satisfaction, at least for me, I don't want to speak for everybody, satisfaction is a big part of it, right? Uh, also, reliability, like uh, how reliable is the system, generally speaking, right? Obviously, you have good and bad for everything, but how reliable, generally speaking, and then how convenient is it? Um, this whole thing is just for fun, and it is obviously just my opinion. Everybody's going to have a different opinion, and every, anytime anybody does a tier video, uh, you get a lot of people with hurt feelings. Whatever your favorite system is can continue to be your favorite system. This is really just based on my own opinion. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex and on TikTok at the underscore metal underscore complex. Starting off here, and by the way, the tiers are the same as always. Legend, huge win. Glad it exists. Fine, meh, and poo poo town, which let's be honest, that's just there specifically <laughs> to create hurt feelings. <laughs> Anyways, satisfaction, reliability, convenience. Starting off here, with thumb studs, represented by the 940. Again, don't worry about that. We're talking about thumb studs in general. Uh, how satisfying is it to deploy a knife with thumb studs? It's pretty satisfying. Obviously, you know, detent plays. It's, it's pretty satisfying. Even the best thumb stud openers are um, just kind of like, I, I guess, I don't know. Personally, I like some systems better. As far as reliability, I think it's fairly reliable. It's kind of about... I guess as reliable as it is satisfying, right? I mean, a good thumb stud opener, I guess, can be pretty good. Convenience, also kind of, kind of there. It's kind of in between. Glad it exists and huge W. I'm. Mm, this is gonna. We started off with a real controversial one. <laughs> um, let's leave some room open. Let's leave some room open. I might come back and change this. Right. Let's get a good idea of exactly what I'm looking at here. Uh, let's talk about something um, something I don't like as much. We're going to talk about assisted opening. Now, this is one of those where it's going to cause this kind of a little bit of, of additional controversy. You're saying assisted openings. That could be assisted flippers, assisted thumb stud openers. So are you classifying you know, the thumb stud opener as purely manual and assisted? the assisted deployment is a different thing, right? Yes, right? Uh, and I'm sure people will have an issue with that. We're talking about the assisted feature in general, not a push button spring load. It's a tension bar, right? You start to move the flipper or the thumb stud or the thumb disc or however many, whatever, right? This is the non-manual, just assisted feature in a knife. Um, I find it to be not super satisfying. I used to like it a lot, right? Uh, reliability though, I mean, let's give credit where it's due. Assisted opening knives are incredibly reliable, right? Um, I would put it as, as high up as glad it exists. Uh, for people who might have issues with, um, you know, arthritis or they just have weaker hands, the deployment, uh, the assisted deployment is actually really great for those people. Um, you have to fight it on the way back down a little bit, uh, but being able to deploy the knife without putting a whole lot of effort into, you know, pulling the flipper tab or using the thumb stud. Obviously, these come in a wide variety of different systems, including including the frame lock and liner lock and all this. And a lot of it depends on the design, right? Which is why I'm generalizing. If we get too specific, we'll be in here for five hours and we won't actually get anything done. So generally speaking, assisted 
deployment, right? This type of torsion bar assisted deployment, which is very common, uh, is meh for satisfaction. Uh, convenience and reliability is pretty high though. Um, I'm gonna put it in fine, but specifically, if I was rating it just on satisfaction, I'd put it in meh, right? Let's talk about front flippers. Front flippers. Uh, this is represented, by the way, the last one was the Kershaw Cryo, I think is what I used to represent that one. Front flippers, uh, uh, the uh, Civivi Sokoke, Soko I'm not sure. Satisfaction, I don't get personally, I know that some people absolutely love front flippers. Front flipper knives are some of my least favorite in terms of satisfaction. And I also don't find them to be personally super reliable. And that's mostly, that's, that's user error for me. Um, I find it to be more of a, whoops, I slipped. I'm not super used to this. Perhaps uh, over time, as many knives as I handle, I still feel uh, that it's, it's a less organic means of deployment than a flipper tab or a thumb stud opener, right? Um, so reliability for me is kind of meh. Satisfaction is also kind of maybe fine. Convenience, I would also put it um, between meh and honestly, well, this, this is so personal. Yeah, front flippers in general, this is gonna bother a lot of people. I'm gonna put it in meh, right? Not super satisfying for me. I, I find it less reliable than a lot of these other systems. Um, and I find it less convenient, right? Um, and this is in, you know, you could, you could just a, a whole bunch of different scenarios, gloved, not gloved, is it raining? Are you, let's take a note from Nick Shabazz's book, are you working in the Vaseline factory, right? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really love it. I can understand why people want it as a feature combined with other elements, but by itself, it's like I always say in my reviews, I don't really like uh, front flippers by themselves. I want them combined with other elements like the Sokoke here, which has um, the thumb stud combined with it, right? Uh, let's talk about something that I do like a lot, the opening hole, like on the Spyderco PM2. Satisfaction? Personally, I love to reverse flick my knives. I love, I absolutely love it. I find it incredibly satisfying, especially when it is combined with a detent system. Obviously, you can get an opening hole on a crossbar lock, which doesn't have the same crisp break of the detent. Um, but when you combine it with that, it's, it's incredible. And even on something like a crossbar lock, it's incredibly reliable. Um, so the opening hole in general, right? I'm not going to dissect this and go, what about opening rectangles or opening triangles or opening tetrahedrons? I'm not going to do that. It's just a hole, right? Whether it's shaped like a circle or not, oval, whatever, all holes, <laughs> all holes included. Satisfaction to me is S tier legend. Reliability, personally, I also find this incredibly reliable. I don't find it super difficult as long as the, you know, it's just like with thumb studs, as long as they're appropriately sized, right? Um, I'm gonna put uh, I'm gonna put that up here. Yeah, convenience, reliability, and satisfaction is absolutely S tier. And you know what? Let's people. I I'm fighting myself on the thumb stud thing. I like thumb studs. I like them. I just find that I use them more than the opening hole. And this is why I reserved the right to go back and change this because I I I use them but not quite as much. And I get, if I'm really thinking about this, they're only slightly less satisfying. I consider them slightly less convenient and less reliable, right? I feel like I'm, I'm less likely to miss opening. Like once the finger's in there, it's gonna open up. Manual, reverse flick, forward flick, whatever. It's probably more satisfying to forward thumb flick a thumb stud for me than it is to forward thumb flick an opening hole. But if I have a knife with an opening hole, I'm going to wheel it out or I'm going to reverse flick it every single time, which is infinitely more satisfying for me. It's also, I find, you know, especially at Spyderco, for example, in general, a Spyderco PM2 in gloves, no problem. No problem at all, right? Uh, should we do something um, a little weird? Well, let's just talk about side opening automatic knife switch blades. That's the same thing as a, that's the same thing as assisted opening. No, it isn't. <laughs> Now, you push a button, it's a plunge lock generally, push a button and it releases the blade, even if it's not a plunge lock. This isn't about locks, right? I know that we're going to get people getting hung up on the combination of the mechanism com combined with a certain locking system and how it creates an infinite number of variables, right? You can drop that timestamp in the description for people who skipped around and didn't, didn't want to, you know, focus on the fact that I'm, I'm, I'm generalizing here. 
Um, but in the case of the Protec TR3, which I think perfectly represents the side opening automatic or the, the traditional side opening switchblade, right? Modern tactical switchblade. Uh, you push a button and it deploys. Whoops. You push a button and it deploys. Um, incredibly satisfying. I don't know about you, but man, the, the power, like when you get a good one, right? Again, we're reducing this to when you get a good one, right? Generally speaking, but when you get a good one, when it's at its best, it's incredibly satisfying. Legendary status up there on satisfaction. Reliability is also really high, especially, you know, it's all, I always test uh, on, a, on a side opening automatic knife. You push the button down, you hold the blade, like not quite at noon, you hold it at about 10 o'clock, and a really good coil spring will still kick that blade out into the open position. Obviously, if it gets gunked up, it's not going to be, you know, quite as reliable, but the same thing could be said for manual knives as well, right? A side opening automatic knife, uh, generally speaking, is incredibly reliable, at least huge W, right? Uh, and convenience, it's also extremely convenient. Wow. <laughs> um, I find it less satisfying than the um, opening hole to deploy. It is, it, is it? Do I find it that way? It's like a different type of satisfaction though. You should have divided these up into more tiers. Nah, mm -mm. we gotta simplify it. Otherwise we're here forever. Satisfaction, it's a different type of satisfaction, but I'm gonna say it's also legend status. Reliability is huge W, convenience is huge W and not legend status only because you have to fight it on the way back down, right? Closing it back up, that depends, I guess, on the locking system. But in this case, it is part of the deployment. I'm arguing with myself here. The coil spring that allows for this action in the first place is part of the deployment. So something that bothers me, I guess, is that fair? I'm gonna, it's, it's going in huge W. We're just, we're done. Executive decision, huge W. Here's something I um, really don't like, and this is gonna bother a lot of people. Let me preface this by saying I am not a Balasong person. Perhaps, perhaps, just like with front flippers, if I spent more time with them, I could learn to love them. Perhaps. I find it a bit uh, tedious to get a Balasong out and get it to, and people will tell me like, you gotta learn the, like, the, ninja, the Ninja Swing 9000. Like that's the fastest means of deployment. Like your, your adversary will be earless before they even realize that they're in a fight. Like, whoa, uh, as somebody who does not use knives typically as a weapon, I, I typically use my knives as tools, right? I know there's gonna be a ton of people who are like, why didn't you include um, like offensive or defensive, like, you know, why didn't we include like the tactical tier? Cause I don't do that. I'm not a, I don't know anything about that, right? So you can rank them that way on your own. Satisfaction for me is poo poo town. I really don't like ballast songs. Again, the only reason it's like that is because I don't spend a lot of time with them. I, maybe I could learn. I love to watch people use them though. I'll be honest with you. I love to watch videos of people who are really good with ballast songs. I think it's amazing. It's so cool, right? I don't have that dexterity or athleticism. I'm also nowhere near as brave, especially when it's a sharp object. So I have all the respect in the world for people who can do it. I personally don't like it and I reserve the right to not like it. Reliability, kind of the same thing for me. I feel like there's a chance I'm gonna throw it uh, or drop it or cut myself, right? Or cut somebody else. So also, no. And convenience for the same thing. I don't find it super convenient. Unless I pull it out by one of the legs and just hold it up and hope that the blade falls and then I just slowly close it. I, the whole thing to me is just kind of a mess. Don't like it, poo-poo town. Um, let's talk about flippers. Oh boy. Titanium frame lock flippers. That's a well-tuned titanium frame lock flipper. Few would argue that that is the best potential, you know, combination of things that would allow for a perfect flipper knife. What better knife to represent that than the ZT0562? Again, don't get hung up on the knife representing because there's a million knives we could use to represent this, this, uh, cat, this specific mechanism, right? Um, you can put a flipper on a bunch of different things. Uh, they've done, Spyderco did it with the compression lock. You can obviously do it with a liner lock. Typically we see it with a frame lock, right? Blah, blah, blah. Bearings, properly tuned detent. When it's really good, it is great. It is also incredibly reliable. And I say that because the whole idea of can I fail it, right? There was this big thing when ZT kind of figured out the formula for flipping. Believe it or not, the whole idea of a good flipper, like being able to flip it without the 
you know, Jerry from parts like wrist flick, which you don't have to do anymore if it's a properly tuned detent. That was a loss. Like, people were like, I don't think they couldn't figure it out. ZT figured it out and made some incredible flipper knives, right? For a while, the ZT-0562 was considered a better flipper than the real thing, which was the Hinder XM18 that it was based on. Satisfaction, S-tier, legend, for sure. Reliability, also, on a good one. That's where the whole can you fail it thing. A lot of times if a flipper is tuned so perfectly, just barely pulling it, just enough energy to break the detent will result in a full lockout, even when it's straight up, right? Now that has to do with a lot of different factors, but when it's good, when it's at its best, it's really good. It's also incredibly convenient outside of the fact that, you know, on its best combination of things, which is the frame lock, properly tuned detent, bearings, weight and mass of the blade, good shape of the flipper tab, all of those things, all star aligning. Convenience is up there um, outside of the fact that you might accidentally put your fingers on the lock bar. But then again, we're, I don't want to put that into the locking system, which I'm sure I've accidentally done here or there. Um, yeah, I do like I do like a good flipper uh, in, in a different way, but almost as much as I do the opening hole there. Um, let's talk about OTFs, double action OTFs, out the front, specifically automatic. You slide the switch forward, it deploys, you slide it backwards, it retracts. Microtech, Ultratech, the most recognizable OTF on earth. Uh, how satisfying it is uh, it's amazing. It's arguably one of the most satisfying ways to deploy a knife. Most people who have never handled an OTF, you see it for the first time and your, your brain just lights up. You're like, oh, those are real? I thought it was... I thought it was like just in movies or a cartoon. Like that, most of us, the first time we see a real one, we're like, whoa. <laughs> and the crazy thing is, is the, the reality of deploying it for the first time is it's actually even more satisfying, at least for me. It was even more satisfying than I cooked up in my head, right? Uh, the feel of the, the chassis and all the little mechanical clicks and clacks, man, so cool. Satisfaction is absolutely legend here. Reliability. Um, Gosh darn it. Reliability, uh, the, these knives eventually, like inevitably, will have issues with reliability f way before, even the best of them, the Hawk Deadlock. The best of them will have reliability issues far before um, any of these manual systems, right? I mean, even a Balasong is more reliable in terms of lockout. And gunk can get trapped in there, and that has to do with the nature of the beast. You can't have this system without getting the rest of the package, right? The train comes with the caboose. <laughs> what a weird analogy. You have to. It's part of it, right? So reliability is, uh, I'd put it about fine or meh, right? Now, it's easy to clean out. Like, a lot of them have the drainage holes. Um, you can blow them out with compressed air. You don't generally have to take them apart. One time I had to take an OTF, a lightning OTF part, to get a pebble out of it. If you get a rock in there, you're going to have to take it apart, right? Um, reliability, I'm put at fine. Satisfaction's at uh, legend. So we're somewhere in here right now. Convenience, it's incredibly convenient. I've argued that double action OTFs are some of the most convenient knives to operate ever. The only thing more convenient is simply just pushing a button and it deploys right so yeah huge huge win on the double action otf let's talk about manual sliding otfs this is an obscure one and this is going to be one of those where people are going to say if you included the little kershaw whatever this thing is a little you you push the little slider thing and you sl and it slides out if you're going to include that why didn't you include this this is just a variation of the otf I don't know. It seemed distinctive enough to me. It seemed specific enough to me to add it and separate it from an automatic OTF because it's not automatic. I mean, it's an entirely different thing, right? So you could also put the little little utility knives. You push the button, right? My dad has a million. Those big silver ones you see on job sites all the time. You push the button and it manually just me. I mean, satisfaction is absolute poo poo town. If I had a tier below poo poo town, these are not satisfying to deploy at all. Reliability. Well, it's a manual process. I mean, it's just dependent on your attention span, I guess. As long as you can focus on that button long enough to push it all the way out, well, yeah, uh, it's pretty reliable. So I do. I, I guess I have to put it up here somewhere in Legend or Huge Win. I mean, your finger could slip off of it. And it might not make it all the way to the open position, depending on your, you know, how determined you are to get it. This one in particular was not the best example for me. I didn't love. It. I'm gonna I'm gonna be fair and put it. I mean, like it's it's because it's based on such a 
manual focused process. I'm a, glad it exists. I'm gonna put glad it exists. Convenience, not really. I mean, you know, you could argue that the utility knife in general is one of the most convenient pocket style tools in existence. Right, but they don't all operate the same. Specifically the ones you have to manual, manually slide out the front. Uh, no, I don't find them super convenient at all. I find them pretty bad. Yeah, I'm gonna put it down here, I don't like them. I don't like them at all. Nail Nick, the most manual, like the most traditionally manual, right? Satisfaction, why do I keep side clicking this? I'm so sorry. Satisfaction, not really. Even the best with like the good half stop and the good snap into the open position. This is gonna depend a lot on, um, you know, cause some people are gonna consider these types of knives the most satisfying because they specifically collect and use slip joint style knives. They get an a specific sense of satisfaction. And I, I will say that I understand that to a degree. There was a while where I was really obsessed with the GEC 15 or the Great Eastern Cutler number 15, which is actually what I'm using. It's a variation of it that I'm using to represent here, um, the nail nick. Um, but you don't get the same, you know, I think the deployment of a really good, you know, nail nick, which is gonna come, I mean, people are gonna say, well, not all nail nick knives are slip joints. And again, I'm trying really hard to separate the deployment feature from the lock. I know I'm doing a terrible job. I can only imagine what the comment section looks like right now. This is why I hate this channel. He's he he said he needs to be scientific about this, and he's not being scientific, and I'm mad. <laughs> um, yeah, no, the nail nick itself is not incredibly satisfying, but it's not. I'm gonna call it fine for satisfaction. Reliability, I think it's far more reliable. It's a much easier process to focus on. I mean, how often do you open a a, a knife with a nail nick? keep wanting to say slip joint. Again, separating the lock from the deployment. How often do you open a knife with a nail nick where you can't do it on the best of them? Super convenient, right? Or I'm sorry, super reliable. Convenience, mm, I don't I don't put it at as high uh, because I find some, some systems are obviously massively more convenient like the OTF, right? Or an assisted feature even is more convenient. It's just a more automated process, right? Convenience in terms of like how much brain power does it take? Um, it's fine. It's fine. That's where that should be. Uh, here's a weird one. I got two different ones from Winter Blade Co. And a lot of you guys are going to say, that's not fair. You know, you got two, spe you got two weird locking systems. That, like if you're going to like get that specific on these, because technically you could classify the Mirage as assisted opening. Can you though? It's like a totally unique thing. It's a magnetically assisted knife. You pull back on the switch and magnets push the blade out. I would say at its simplest, you would classify this as assisted. But this is a unique system, right? You, there could easily be a whole class of knives around this deployment system. And it, it feels completely different and technically operates different than a classic torsion bar. So I put this one in here. And this is going to be another one of those knives where if you included that, you should have included this, 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 subcategories of this, this, this. No! This is how I'm going to do it. This is the way I want to do it. Uh, personally, this was my least favorite um, Winter Blade Co. knife that I used. It was kind of cool. Uh, I would call it fine in terms of satisfaction. Uh, reliability. Also, uh, I would put it in meh because if you held it straight up, it wasn't strong enough to get the blade to deploy. If you can find a magnetic feature where no matter what, as soon as you pull that switch, and a lot of you are gonna reference that OTF that's on his Instagram, that is probably amazing, I'm sure. Different thing though. I would rank it much higher if it was um, if it was reliable at the vertical position, right? Meaning no matter how you deploy it, it's gonna come out. So meh and fine. Convenience, also kind of in here. Um, I'm gonna put it as fine. Uh, how about the other one? Now, I forget what he calls this. This is like a push flipper, a magnetic push flipper. If you have handled the Winter Blade Co. Factor, you're probably like me, because that system is unlike anything that anyone felt before. If you have not specifically handled and utilized the Factor, then you don't know what this feels like, and very few people have. And I'm not trying to like, oh, we're in a special club. 
we're a special club, but we we know things. I'm not trying to be like that. Eventually, more and more and more people will experience this. But those of you who have experienced this, which I think, I feel like people will side with me. This is a unique system. It is not a flipper. It's not a thumb stud opener. It's not an assisted feature. It's, you push the thing right here. You push it in and it breaks the detent and throws the blade with the assistance of magnets. And then it sings to you legendary satisfaction. Also, it's really hard to fail. Uh, I don't think it's impossible to fail, so I'm going to put in huge win. Once you push down on that thing, it's going to deploy, right? Um, and uh, we, we're not counting the big slot there. I know you can reverse flick it, but again, we've already talked about opening holes and slots and things. That thing, well, it's a different shape, little circle. doesn't matter. It's the same idea, right? It's combined with a completely different locking system. doesn't matter. We're not combining the locking systems. The feature itself, between legend and huge win, convenience, pretty darn convenient too. I'm going to put it under huge win. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's quite as convenient as just like your straight up. Boy, it does kind of, it does kind of rely. It does kind of belong in legend status. I, people are going to, this is this guy is right in between legend and huge win. Uh, let's talk about the hidden. This is the Spyderco Volaton sub hilt. So if you know, you know, it's a dual action knife, right? We're focusing specifically on the automatic. This is it's still kind of the same. You move a switch, like people say, that's the same thing as pushing a button and it releases. But it it is different though. It's a different level of satisfaction. This has a little like sliding tab you move it, the protec whiskers the same thing as sliding tag tab and it deploys satisfaction is pretty satisfying it's a little it borders on scary satisfaction i'll put it in huge win for me personally because i don't hold them the same way and they always surprise me i'm always a little startled by them but it is pretty satisfying reliability well obviously if you if you figure out how to you know slide that tab over that thing's gonna deploy all of the ones that i've ever handled those hidden you know bookshelf kind of automatic knives they freaking fire man this thing fires hard so i'm i mean reliability it's it's gonna deploy it's going to right so i'd say that's s tier convenience no i don't find it nearly as convenient as just pushing a button you're a lot of them are over you're holding the knife and going over or up at an angle um, I don't love the, con the the convenience of it. I'm going to put it at, at glad it exists. The only one that's there so far, right? Uh, so the, here's, here's I'm going to get in trouble for including the slot and not combining it with thumb hole, right? <laughs> so the slot or the fuller deployment, right? Uh, which is... Um, in my opinion, slightly different from an opening hole because you don't get the depth, right? Because I just got done saying we can't count this big long slot in the factor as its own thing because it's too similar to the hole, right? You could say, well, it's the same thing as an elongated fuller. I would argue with you. You can get better access to it because you're a lot of times you, you can get much more depth because it goes all the way through. Fuller is only as deep as they choose to make it, which they don't, they often don't go incredibly deep because otherwise you end up with like a rail thin piece of material between the two sides. Sometimes you only see it on one side, right? So obviously a wide variety here, but it is very similar. I'll, you know, lean back into the, you should have, that, that should have, the slot should have been its own thing, separate from the whole whatever. The, this, uh, the, the fuller deployment. How satisfying is it? Well, it can be, sorry, I keep right clicking. It can be about as satisfying as an opening hole, but not quite, even the best of them, right? Reliability, I feel like that's way lower because again, a lot of them don't tend to be ledged, right? Uh, with the opening hole, there's a ledge. There's a place for your finger to catch. Aside from like the, okay, if we say that the um, uh, Vero, the Vero uh, Synapse with the rectangle or whatever, right? That's a that's about the best of them because it's like a rectangle with a ledge. Most of them are not like that. So at their best, I guess they're pretty good. Um, but on average, they're generally just kind of 
pr- f- glad it exists kind of territory, right? So we're kind of in here. Convenience, also kind of in glad it exists. Yeah, I'm going to put it in glad it. I think that's, that's the right spot for it. Uh, okay, so we're going to get really, really specific here. Uh, knives that have a pull down and release, kind of like, obviously with the Demco 80, 20.5 and like the Snex Super Lock. Those have secondary, those have multiple means of deployment, right? Uh, and in, ter- in terms of the Demco, it's got the full slot, it's got the thumb studs on some of them, right? Same with the 8020s. But there's also something you can do, which is where we got, like everybody celebrated the Demco 8020 and 8020.5 for Fidget Factor. You could simply pull down on that, that shark lock and whip it in and out, which had a, its own, that was its own thing, right? I almost exclusively deploy those knives like that, right? Which is funny and ironic because I always make fun of, you know, parts department Jerry for doing the tactical whip. I think there's, that's a different thing. That's tactical Jerry has a crap knife and he hasn't figured out how to properly deploy it with the thumb start of the flipper. And even if he did, it probably wouldn't deploy properly. So he just whips it out to look cool, right? He hasn't discovered a properly tuned detent yet. This is so nose in the air. This is designed to be deployed a bunch of different ways and is properly tuned, but it is its own specific level of fun uh, and convenience, pulling that down and just kind of whipping it out or letting it fall out. I would say it's not quite as satisfying as the flipper or the um, the opening hole, but it is it is pretty satisfying. Reliability, it's pretty reliable. If you whip it out too hard, it bounces back. Sometimes you let go of the lock, it doesn't always kind of get out there, right? But it's incredibly convenient. Yeah, that belongs in huge win for sure. Uh, super convenient. Being able to just pull that tab back. That right there, if you didn't know, Demco invented both the triad lock and the shark lock. The shark lock is just as strong, apples to apples, same size, same lock, right? Same knife. If you had a triad lock, you know, on a on a Demco 8020.5 versus a shark lock in the 8020.5, both locks are going to be equally strong. But the shark lock is just objectively more convenient uh, and more satisfying, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, not quite, but definitely a huge win. Um, and then let's see here. I also included for that exact reason, cause I got to thinking about it and I said, is the Paragon Warlock, are we going to classify that as gravity deployment or is it more like the 8020.5? And then I realized, what am I saying? The Warlock is its own thing. Satisfaction also, man, that thing is a clickety clackety beast. I love, I love that thing. Satisfaction is definitely up here in huge W. Reliability is super low because you have to time it perfectly to get it exactly right. Unless you do that thing where you push the button and you just turn it to six o'clock and you get it sitting there and then you release, right? So reliability, I would say in terms of like getting it, you probably practicing with it makes it better. So I'm going to say huge win for satisfaction, meh in terms of reliability. Convenience. It's also kind of in here. Yeah, Paragon Warlock, I'm glad it exists. Um, maybe that's, I'm a little more biased. I put a little more stock there into the satisfaction of it. The satisfaction of the Paragon Warlock definitely for me personally overshadows the elements of reliability and convenience, even though I heavily implied that they're all equal. <laughs> non-scientific, non-scientific. It's just for fun. It's just my opinion. Speaking of gravity operation, like the Riot Exo, a, a, a traditional gravity, you pull the thing and you right deploy it satisfaction it's fairly satisfying it's it's more like huh this is like really you don't see this very often right now we have the riot exo we also have the uh remet rt swordfish pretty cool both of them similar idea this one kind of opens up how satisfying is it to allow the frame to just open up and let the blade drop out of it pretty satisfying not quite as satisfying as a forceful thwack of the blade, right? All of these in some way, shape, or form, right? This one's just rely, just reliant on gravity. I suppose you can kind of whip it down. I don't know why you do that. Like, just let gravity do it, right? Reliability is about as, reli- about as reliable as gravity. So can't think of anything more reliable than gravity. Uh, oh, probably shouldn't have said that. Those of you who spend too much time on TikTok, there's a bunch of people I'm sure believe gravity doesn't exist. Oh, that's too bad. 
Uh, yeah, gravity's pretty reliable. Um, so up, pre, up here, convenience. It's also pretty convenient. It belongs in huge win. Yeah, it really does. I really enjoyed my time with that, and I found it very convenient, very reliable, carrying my XOM. Um, it did exactly what I wanted it to do, exactly what I expected it to do every time with basically no brain cells involved. All of these I have to devote a little more energy to. Um, the, uh, the thumb disc. Um, represented by the Kershaw version of the Emerson CQC6. Oh, this have a cult following because this is if I say anything bad about this, it's like I'm saying something bad about Emerson. And there's a whole there's a whole crowd of Emerson folks that are like ready with their pitchforks and torches. And I I don't, I don't love it as much as thumb studs, right? I'm kind of in terms of satisfaction, it's it can be there sometimes. Like the best of them are pretty close to thumb studs, but I don't find it as satisfying as a thumb stud. Personally, it's just my opinion. Glad it exists. It's all, it's, there you go. Reliability, it's kind of there in between fine and glad it exists, right? The best of them are pretty good. On average, they're fine, right? Convenience, kind of also here, it's fine, it's fine. The wave, oh, don't you dare say anything bad about the tactical wave. <laughs> Represented here by the actual Emerson CQC-8, Bowie, I think. Satisfaction. I will admit, when I can do it correctly, right? Which again, it's just it doesn't matter how often I do it. When I'm doing it correctly, it's satisfying in kind of like a funny, oh my gosh, I actually did it kind of way, right? So I would say it's somewhere in between huge win and legend in terms of satisfaction. The wave is the little unicorn horn. You can't really see it. It sticks up off the top of the of the knife, and the idea is technically these are the fastest. A lot of people. I thought an OTF was the fastest deploying knife in the world. Technically, from the pocket to deployed. This knife can deploy as you pull it out, right? It's, it's going to be faster. Somebody who knows what they're doing, the most practiced OTF ninja versus the most practiced and educated <laughs> uh, wave feature ninja, wherever you go to school for that, whatever Ivy League school, right? The most celebrated with the best credentials. The wave ninja is going to win. You know, OTF Ninja's ears are going to be gone, dude. Just, and then resheath with the little sun glare, right? It's going to be too fast. It's incredibly satisfying when you can do it. I would say it's absolutely legends here. For me, it's just like a funny, it's different. It's a different type of satisfaction versus the opening hole of the, the flipper, but it's definitely there. Reliability is way down, at least for me. I can't always do it. I'll put it at meh for reliability, right? It's one of those things, if it's actually being utilized the way that it's supposed to, like in a self-defense situation, you had better, you had better, you know, get it right. Because if you get it wrong, it won't deploy, it'll go in your leg, you'll throw it, right? And you'll look dumb. Nobody wants to look dumb before they get the beans kicked out of them in the alley behind Walgreens. <laughs> Reliability is way down here, I think, for the average person, right? For the most practiced Ivy League, you know, wave ninja, I'm sure, right? I'm sure you're S tier, right? Sigma males and all that. Convenience. I don't find it very convenient either. I, I think it's fine. It's fine. Um, averaging everything out. Yeah, it's somewhere in between fine and glad it exists. Lever Leto's the lever. That, it's essentially a lever. I mean, it's, it's still an automatic knife. Again, this is what people are going to get upset, like, that's the same thing as a button operator. Is it, it's not really the same thing. Pushing a button and pushing down on a lever are two completely different sensations, right? Um, it's pretty satisfying. What is this? Oh, the tick. Yeah. So right now, what's happening in my time is uh, the tick unboxing is occurring. So that's what that is. <laughs> uh, which is um, by uh, Bergblades. It's a great knife, actually. You should watch that video. It would have uh, occurred yesterday in your time. I think depends on when I upload this video. Friday, um, the lever lettos. I'm kind of in the. It's it's not quite as satisfying for. Well, it's pretty. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty satisfying to push that. If you've ever played with one, I've got one back here. Yeah, it's it's pretty. It's a huge win for satisfaction. It's pretty cool. Reliability is also way up there. The best of them are definitely reliable. A lot of them have very powerful springs. 
Not quite as powerful as the coil springs in modern knives. The lever lettos are often associated with more traditional automatic knives. They're pretty satisfying. I'm sorry, they're pretty reliable. Maybe glad it exists, right? Convenience. It's also very convenient. I'm going to put that under glad it exists. Top flippers. Top flippers. Different than a flipper and different than a fl front flipper. Absolutely represented by the, I had to borrow this image from Arizona Custom Knives. Thank you very much, Arizona Custom Knives. They probably don't know, but it's a great place if you've never checked it out. I'm sure they won't mind. Um, this is the Brown Knives Cortex XL, which is one of my favorite top flippers ever. I, I own this knife. Totally different than a rear flipper. I would be lying if I said it's fun. It's fun, but in like a, it's like a slightly less convenient than a regular flipper tab. It's definitely more convenient in my. It's more con convenient, and more satisfying, I think, than a front flipper. So I'm gonna call a really good top flipper a huge win. Reliability, I slip off of them a lot, even the best of them. I'm, I think that uh, a regular rear flipper tab, you know, at three o'clock, right, on the knife when it's closed, if you're holding it like this, like straight up and down, I find it to be not as reliable for me and not quite as convenient. Here, glad it exists. And finally, Perhaps the most satisfying knife or deployment feature in existence, the single action OTA. Oh my goodness. Have you handled a Halo? You ever fired a Halo? There's also, there's a, there's a bunch of different single action OTFs out there, but the best of the best, most people would agree is the Microtech Halo, the newest being the Halo 6. This is absolutely terrifying to fire for the first time. And um, if you are new to knives or you know, maybe you're just really young or maybe you have a young mind and you can't own or carry or look at automatic OTFs where you live. So you're left with your imagination, right? And your imagination is based on what you've seen in movies. And in movies, they show people going up to people with automatic OTF knives and they push a button and just goes right through them. Well, that's mostly nonsense, right? However, uh, a dual action OTF is substantially less powerful than a single action OTF. I have fired on accident a single action OTF uh, into my hand, a much less powerful one uh, than the Halo. The only reason it did not go further into my hand, I don't think it would have gone through, but I definitely would have gone to the hospital. The only reason it didn't go all the way through is because it hit a callus. Now it split the callus, definitely. It went through and then it went behind the callus and got into my meat. It hurt. I'm not going to pretend that I, you know, didn't cry a little bit. That really hurt. Those things are dangerous. Um, the Halo 6 would have ruined my hand. I would have been in the hospital. I would have come to the hospital like somehow this knife got in. I I was, you know, I was cutting tomatoes and uh, <laughs> whoops-a-daisy. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Halo 6 is super powerful, but unbelievably satisfying. Once you get over the fear of deploying it, incredibly satisfying. Reliability, also S-tier. You push that button, it's coming out. It is not going to fail unless you have unless you have packed potting soil into the opening. That thing is going to deploy. I would venture to guess the Halo 6 will deploy even if you've got some crap in there. It'll just blast it out the front. It is so powerful. Convenience. Well, yeah, it's super convenient. Push the button and it deploys. I'm putting that up there into S tier. This is interesting. Let's look back and see if there's anything I want to change. Yes, yes, yes thumb studs I feel like in the right place a lot of people are going to say you are a demon lord for putting thumb studs in huge win and not legend here and I cannot subscribe to you further that's fine um, you know that's you can have your opinion a lot of people will say the same thing about dual action OTFs and um, uh, the side opening automatic knife um, I feel like this area up here most people are going to agree with me on um, well, I'm sorry this area right here is where I'm going to get the most argument, right? From here down, we're going to get a little bit of disagreement. I feel like the, the biggest complaint I'm going to get with this video is how I categorize the different systems and why I did not include additional systems that are subcategorizations of other deployment methods. And the, re the reason is because we'll be here forever. We've been here for 44 minutes already, mostly because I talked too long. I'm certain that there are deployment features that I missed. Um, so if I miss something and you feel like it should have been included, 
you just let me know and maybe we'll do this again sometime, right? If I get you know, enough pitchforks and torches, I get enough people mad at me, then maybe we'll do it again. It was just fun for me to do. I haven't done a tier list in a while and I really enjoyed this. Let me know where you think I went wrong. Let me know how you would have done it, right? What your favorite systems are and why, why you don't like certain things, right? Um, yeah, let me know how you feel in the comments. That's going to be pretty much it today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.